In this video, we'll introduce the idea of a mathematical function. Functions are things which express relationships between variables. So for example, the temperature as a function of the time of day. A single variable function is, strangely, it's a relationship between two variables. One of them is an independent variable and the other one is dependent. So for example, time is something which just happens. It's, it's independent in some sense, but the temperature at some time of the day depends on that time of the day. It's usually cooler at night and warmer in the daytime. A more mathematical example might be something along the lines of y equals x squared. Here we've got that y, this variable y, is a function of some other variable x. x is called the independent variable. We think of that as the input. And y is the dependent variable because the value for it depends on what the value of x is. When we evaluate y, we use an x value to tell us what it might be. With mathematical functions, we specifically talk about relationships where for every allowable value of x, whatever allowable might mean we talk about later, there's one and only one value of y. And that's an important restriction. Now one thought here is, uh, is, is to think about how this expands on the idea of mathematical expressions and equations and comes to the idea of a function. With functions, we're talking about um, giving an expression and then saying, well, this expression has variables in it. What values can the expression take on as we change the value of the variable? That's kind of what we're getting at here. We're moving up in complexity from expressions and equations. So here's an example of a mathematical function. And it says here, given s of t, that's how we say that symbol there, s of t, s is a function of t, given that that's equal to 4t plus 3, what are the independent and dependent variables? Well, essentially you can think about it as the value of s depends on what the value of t is because of the way that this equation is written. Also, this symbol kind of gives it away as well. So we can say that the independent in this case, the independent variable is t. It's the one that can vary freely. And the dependent variable, which is the one which has a value which depends on the independent variable, that's s. So s is a function of t, or s depends on t. It's another way of reading that. So this brings us to actually talking about that notation. Now, a function is often written using the notation y equals f of x kind of notation here. And that's exactly how we say it. Y is a function of X. But the thing is, quite often we get in the habit of using Y's and X's, and even this little F here when we're talking about functions of a variable. It doesn't matter what letters we use. There, You can use any letters, really, as long as you're clear about what they are. So, for example, we could say something like G of T. G is a function of T, meaning the value of G depends on the value of T. And similarly, h of s, the value of h, depends on the value of s. Now, often we'll be asked to find the value of a function given a particular value of the independent variable. So the value of h given some value of s. And this is um, essentially a process in substitution of that value into the, the equation or the formula for that function. We do uh, have a way of writing it, though. We will we have a function f of x and we want to know the value of that function when x is equal to some specific number a, we would write f of a. So for example, the temperature as a function of time of day, we might talk about the temperature at 9 in the morning or 9 hours after midnight. That might be something like 15 degrees Celsius. Or the temperature at noon, 12 hours after midnight we might say that that's something like 30 degrees Celsius. So we write them in this sort of notation here, given a function t of little t, temperature as a function of time after midnight. Now one important thing, I often point these out, note that this notation, f brackets x, it does not mean f times x. It means that x is an input into some function rule or, uh, or equation, f of x. So just be careful of the context and you should be okay with knowing when it's times and when it's not times and it's actually a function. All right, so a little bit more on evaluating functions. Uh, here's a few examples and I'm going to go through this first one straight away. A, given f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x, 
I want to know what f of minus 1, f of 0, and f of 1 would be. Now, like I was saying, this is just a matter of substituting those values of the independent variable into the equation for the function itself. So f of minus 1, that's going to be minus 1 squared, take away 3 times minus 1. Okay, and that's going to be 1 plus 3, or 4. So we can write that straight away. f of 0, similarly we substitute x equals 0 and get 0 minus 0. So that one's easy. And f of 1, put a 1 in there instead of x, we get 1 squared is 1. Take away 3 times 1, that's going to be minus 2. So those are some specific values of the function f of x given x values. Okay, give yourself a minute now, pause the video and try out B and C for yourself and then come back and follow it through with me. Okay, so in part B, we're asked to give, we're given h of t is 8 minus 4t. We're asked to find h of m minus 1, where m is some arbitrary real number. Okay, that's, that's no problem, it's just, it's not a regular number, but let's just substitute in m minus 1 anyway. What we can do is we'll say h of m minus 1, and we replace everywhere we see a t, we'll replace it with m minus 1. So 8 minus 4, m minus 1, and that's fine. Or we could expand it out and simplify a bit. So if you expand the brackets here, you're going to get a plus 4. So we'll end up with 12 minus 4m. Okay, sometimes that happens. It looks a bit weird right now, but it does come up. Okay, in C, we've got f of x is x squared minus 3x minus 10. And we're asked, what is f of 5? Okay, that's fairly simple. We'll just substitute, replace any x's with 5's. So we get 5 squared minus 3 times 5, take away 10. So that's 25 minus 15 minus 10. Well, that's just 0. So f of 5 is 0 when f of x is x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so let's see. In this video, we have introduced the terms function, independent and dependent when it term, in terms of variables, and we've looked at what a function is. It's a bit of an extension along from uh, expressions and equations. And we've seen how to evaluate a function for specific or even arbitrary dependent variable values.